questions around corruption. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Pocock. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. This is a momentous moment to have a national anti-corruption commission being legislated in Australia. Uh, I'd like to thank the Attorney General for his leadership on this, the way that he has engaged uh, from very early on after the election on the principles for the NAC and uh, as more details have been added, his further engagement. I also want to acknowledge the Greens who first introduced the Federal Integrity Commission bill to the Senate in 2010. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Senator Shoebridge and his work through the committee stages and the way that he's been pushing to ensure that we get the very best possible knack we can. I'd like to acknowledge the former and current mem members for INDI, Cathy McGowan and Helen Haynes, and their unwavering work to both represent their community and to push for more transparency, more integrity uh, and ultimately more accountability for the people who make big decisions that affect all Australians. I'd also like to acknowledge the member for Clark, Andrew Wilkie, uh, a whistleblower himself who has lived experience of, of what whistleblowers face when they do come forward with information that is in the public uh, interest. And he has consistently talked about the need for more accountability and transparency. Clearly, in, uh, integrity infrastructure in Australia is far from perfect. Recent <coughs> examples of questionable spending decisions that we've seen in the news and that Australians have been concerned about, the commuter car parks, sports rorts, uh, security contractors in offshore detention centres and water purchases, to name just a few. While members in our communities across the country are struggling, we're seeing decisions on how to spend public money made without transparency or accountability. Communities across this country deserve a strong federal integrity body. They deserve a world-class and world-leading knack. Integrity was a key issue at the recent election, door knocking, meeting people across the ACT for politics in the park. Integrity came up again and again. People want to have faith in decision makers. They want to have faith in politicians and the political processes and the public service that are making all these decisions that affect uh, every part of our lives. And it's not just here in the ACT, across the country. Australians overwhelmingly support a strong integrity commission. Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index shows Australia slipped four places from 14th to 18th internationally between 2020 and 2021. Uh, corruption is clearly not new, uh, nor is the need for an integrity commission. Uh, in the face of uh, people seeing what, what they perceive as a widening gulf between them and elected representatives. This is urgent. New South Wales uh, established their ICAC in 1988, and the federal uh, jurisdiction will be the last to establish an equivalent body in Australia. Uh, the delay we've seen has created urgency but urgency is no excuse for getting parts of this bill wrong. As many before me have highlighted, I would, would like to stress the importance of having public hearings when it's in the public interest for them to take place. Public hearings are an important part of transparency and, and integrity. They encourage new witnesses to come forward. They offer a strong deterrence and they increase public trust. People can see that there is a process underway. Uh, the uh, National Anti-Corruption Commission fact sheet from Labor at the recent election sets out what 
the now government promised uh, Australians before the election. And uh, there's a number of dot points, uh, all of them powerful and good. One of them does speak to public hearings, and it explains that the NAC will have the power to hold public hearings where the Commission determines it is in the public, in public interest to do so. The NAC will have the power to hold public hearings where the Commission determines it is in the public interest to do so. Exceptional circumstances is too high a threshold. Uh, to, to put this in, in, in context, in Victoria, where the IBAC has a exceptional circumstances clause, between 2012 and 2021, the Victorian IBAC held just five public hearings. In New South Wales, where they're not limited by exceptional circumstances, they held 45 public hear hearings. If, if exceptional circumstances do not exist, there, there, will, there will be no public hearing, even if it is in the public interest for there to be one. I really don't understand why we are putting the private interests of politicians and officials over the public interest in transparency and accountability. We are now in a situation where Australians have voted for more transparency. The now Labor government promised a na National Anti-Corruption Commission, which we are seeing, but crucially, on a, and a, on a very crucial element about giving an independent commission against corruption the ability to decide for itself if it's in the public interest to have public hearings. The government is, is, is ham, hamstringing them due to a deal with the now opposition. We've got uh, Attorney General Mark Dreyfus doing a deal with the leader of the opposition, Peter Dutton, to stitch this up, which provides more protections <laughs> for politicians that aren't afforded to people in our community when, when they are found um, you know, corrupt. I understand the desire for consensus, but I, I really believe on this point integrity is too important. We have to get this right. We, we have to ensure that an independent commission can decide for itself when it's in the public interest and not add this really high hurdle for them to get over. And many integrity experts, as we heard during the committee process, agree that exceptional circumstances should be removed. The, the National Integrity Committee, the Accountability Roundtable, the Centre for Public in Integrity, Transparency International, leading academics like Professor Anne Toomey have also raised concerns. She says that exceptional circumstances is a very high hurdle. It can confidently be predicted that almost all hearings will be in private. As pointed out earlier, we even heard from the Victorian IBAC Commissioner, the Honourable Robert Redlick AM. The NAC must be permitted to hold public examinations without a requirement for exceptional circumstances, so long as there is specific provision that the Commissioner cannot call a witness unless satisfied that is, there is no unreasonable damage to reputation and there will be no damage to the witness's welfare. In surveying people in the ACT about the NAC and what they would like to see, I received a response from Laurie Dunn. Laurie was a public servant for more than 30 years and describes declining standards of integrity and an erosion of community trust in politicians and the political process across his 30-year career. To quote Laurie Dunn, a federal anti-corruption commission is essential if we have any hope of re-establishing trust in the federal political process. The current model proposed is acceptable except in relation to public hearings. This should be based on a public interest test and not on an exceptions basis. Corruption thrives when no one is looking. I support an amendment to remove 
exceptional circumstances. Uh, I also believe that parliamentary oversight of the Commission should be strengthened. I note that there are a number of amendments that, that speak to that. To have an independent NAC, we need an impartial parliamentary committee. Currently, as it stands, the government chair will have the casting vote on the Joint Standing Committee on the NAC, which I, I think means it will be less effective ensuring that the right commissioner is appointed. A, a really important job and clearly important that the government of the day cannot just put who they want if the rest of the parliament doesn't think that they're, they're the best person for the job. There are other concerns which, which I will uh, raise in the committee stage and move amendments. Um, as Helen Haynes moved in the House, I believe the def definition of corruption should include pork <coughs> barrelling. Uh, third parties should be able to be uh, investigated where they act to corrupt public officials who have no knowledge of the attempt, be that through, through tenders or the way that they present uh, in information. And safeguards uh, need to be in there to ensure that the NAC is adequately resourced. There needs to be real transparency around what the NAC is requesting to perform optimally and what is being given to them. As the Attorney General has said, whistleblower protections will be dealt with separately, but I really want to highlight just how crucial this is. Whistleblower protections are fundamental to ensuring integrity, and I really welcome whistleblower reforms to be introduced at the end of this week, and I call on the government to act as quickly as possible to establish a whistleblower protection commissioner and provide whistleblowers with the protection they deserve. There should be really clear processes and pathways for people in the public service, in the, the, the private sector, to come forward with information that may well be politically inconvenient, may be frankly embarrassing for, for Australians, but is crucial if we are to continue to improve the, the open democracy, democracy we have and all the benefits of living in such a system. Uh, this National Anti-Corruption Commission is a huge step in the right direction. Australians have wanted it for some time and I really welcome the introduction of this legislation. Clearly there's more work to be done. This is uh, a start. This is ideally a safety net that doesn't get used much. There is much work to do in terms of cultural change and, and, and uh, driving the right behaviours. And there's clearly more work to be done in, to restore public trust in government. We need whistleblower law reform. We need uh, electoral law reform, uh, truth in political advertising laws. And uh, I urge the government to amend uh, the bill to strengthen this and make this a world leading anti-corruption commission, a uh, anti-corruption commission that Australians have asked for and deserve. Thank you, Senator David Focock.